Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. My name is Doran Aldana, as you know, and we have a very special guest today, the one and only Ben Davis. His story is going to rock your world. If you guys have been in the struggle bus, you've been in scarcity, lack, limitation, and just holding your breath, hunkering down, waiting for rates to go down so you can go back to normal, quote unquote, you've definitely come to the right place today because today we're going to share a rather unusual and inspiring story uh, as Ben shares how he 4 x his income in the last six months without the hell of cold calling, begging, bribing, kissing butts, and all by referral business. And to be able to win in unwinning times, to prosper in a prosperous times is obviously a special kind of awesome, worthy to be unveiled and shared with our mortgage community. So I'm really jacked and stacked to share Ben with you guys, his story, and you're going to hear the heartbeat of a true champion. And this is something that is not just for him. It's something for you. My goal is that you latch onto it. You hear the story behind the story around how you can turn adversity into opportunity and how you can take market share share while everyone else is dropping or or scaling back in their business. A lot of your competition are dropping like flies right now. This is the time to take market share. This is the time to expand versus contract. So that being said, really stoked to have you here, Ben. Welcome to the podcast, brother. And so grateful to have you here. Yeah, Doran, thanks for having me here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, let me tell my story. Most definitely, man. I'm stoked. So why don't we just share a little bit about your background? How long have you been in the business? What inspired you to get into the business? And take us way back to not so long ago uh, as to you taking the plunge into this business and uh, what kind of got you fired up to get into this crazy industry called the mortgage business. Yeah, it's actually a long time ago. I started back in 2002, 2003, straight out of college. Um, So like two decades now. (laughs) Decades, sort of decades, yeah. So I I, uh, come out of college. I had an aunt and uncle that owned a mortgage brokerage or my wife's aunt and uncle. And uh, they were making money and they looked like they were doing a great job. They've been doing it for decades. And I had gotten a degree in graphic design and a couple of the jobs offers I was getting just weren't very good. And I thought, hey, I'll try this mortgage thing out. I'll see if it's any good, see if I can make a run at it. And uh, I did pretty I did pretty poorly for the first uh, bunch of years. I made enough to get by and to have a little bit of hope, but just never really hit my stride, never really figured out the what made things click uh, and and had not enough success. And my wife said, you got to do something. Can't, hand, can't handle these months where we're not making enough money. And so I, uh, I ended up uh, kind of changing roles and became a wholesaler for about uh, 14, 13, 14 years. And, uh, and as a wholesaler, I kind of wasn't responsible for finding the deals, wasn't responsible for going out hunting, but I didn't have the income potential that I would have had just being a regular old mortgage guy, talking to consumers, helping them buy houses. Um, and then COVID hit and rates dropped to two, two and a half percent, three percent. And I was like, dude, the mortgage gold rush, right? <laughs> it's a gold rush. <laughs> ching, ching. <laughs> so I jumped back in the business and I turned into the refi king. Like I was doing refis left and right and uh, was was doing pretty well, um, was busier than I'd ever been on the retail side um, for what for me was considered a great success uh, just because I was I was making money and I wasn't having to struggle to find the deals. And then come 2020, late 21, early 22. And the reef, the rates started going up. The refis all dried up. I didn't have realtor connections. Um, the marketing I was doing was falling flat. The money I was spending on ads was going nowhere. And I was just really struggling. And my wife said, Hey, you tried this once. It wasn't working out. You had to bail. You tried this again. You're failing. This isn't working out. She just had a lot of insecurity about, um, where the paycheck was going to come from, if I was going to succeed or not. And, uh, I didn't know if I could make, I didn't know if I could pull it off. I thought I'd have to switch jobs again and find something else. Cause I just could not get enough deals to make things work out. Um, and so that was about the time I saw a door ad and I was like, who is this guy that says he can change things around and uh, make things happen? Who is this bald dude? And how is he going to be able to help me? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and of course, all the skepticisms that come with uh, everyone and their dog, you know, hawking their bright, shiny objects and their silver bullets and their easy buttons, right? So it's easy to be skeptical and jaded. Even when we know we need help, it's easy to think, you know, all these doctors uh, are selling their, you know, snake oil. And uh, it's just a bunch of charlatans trying to make money off uh, fake and uh, lackluster solutions. And so if you guys were like Ben, chances are you're in a similar boat. You know, it's like everyone's got their bright, shiny object. How could this be any different? Tell us before we talk about, you know, how our solution actually worked. Imagine that a solution actually work working such that you had such a remarkable turnaround forexing your business in six months is pretty remarkable. And you've got some cool charts and graphs because you're a visual and you're uh, a little nerdy when it comes to the numbers like that. So yeah. stay tuned guys. If you're into numbers and visualizations of graphs and charts and you get giddy with that kind of stuff, you're going to love what we've got to share with you in terms of the difference that working smart makes versus just working hard. But let's go back to the value. You were still on the struggle bus looking for solutions. The wife was breathing down your neck, understandably, right? Our female counterparts tend to be a little bit more connected to security versus the adventure of being on the front lines and just having just pure faith to drive us on us dudes. We tend to just drive by faith. The ladies, they need to see some zeros and commas in the bank account to have that faith. So, you know, this is a very common symptom of uh, being a warrior on the front lines and having our ladies uh, feeling rather precarious and insecure financially if we're not bringing home the bacon, so to speak, or if there's a roller coaster ride financially. So you're in that roller coaster ride. You'd make some you made some bank during the covid season and then things started to wane as rates went up. And all of a sudden the pipeline's drying up and the income along with it. Tell us if you can reconnect to that dark valley for a moment. What was your deepest fear as you didn't have a solution yet and you're still banging your head against the wall, spinning your wheels, trying to find a solution? What was that like? What was your deepest fear? What was keeping you up at night at that stage? Yeah, I, I think my real deepest fear was just that I, you know, I'm in my mid 40s. I got kids getting ready to go to college. I'm, I'm kind of at that point in my life where I was thinking, do I have to go out and get another job? Do I have to train for something? How do I interview at this point? I really didn't have any other specialist skills. Um, even all the wholesalers in our industry were struggling and companies were shutting down. Like it just didn't, it seemed like the, the options out there were so few and far between. Mm. And I just remember I, I had sleepless nights just thinking, I, I got to make this work because I don't know what other options I have. I, mm. I don't know how else to find something that would work, work. And my wife's like, just go and interview for some jobs. And I'm like, you, just, you can't just go interview for some jobs. But I've got a specialized set of skills in a weird industry. It's not like I can just run out there and get a job at Intel. And it's not how it works. Right. And there's a lot that comes with knowing how much there is at stake, right? As a provider, but also just as a human being who knows they have a purpose more than just punching a clock, working for someone, having someone tell you when to come, when to go, how much you're worth, office ball and chain around your ankle, glass ceiling over your head, micromanager breathe down your neck and feeling like you're missing your purpose and feeling humiliated because you got your ass handed to you for the second time. And, uh, you know, admitting defeat and failure to friends, family, having that elephant in the room of like, Oh, don't talk to him about the mortgage business. You got chewed <laughs> up for the second time. Right? Like there's so much that can castrate a man or, or kick you in the proverbial nuts or ovaries, depending on your gender that really hurts to the core. And it doesn't take much to see as the income dries up and the bills start stacking up and you start to see the convergence of too much money at the end of the month, or rather too much month at the end of the money to realize that this is not sustainable. Tell me what for you just on the day to day was the most painful part of that, not having a solution, not knowing how to fix it, not knowing how to get yourself back on track. What for you just on the day to day living in your shoes was the most painful part about that? Yeah, there was a real sense of of frustration just just that I feel like I'm pretty intelligent, I'm pretty capable. 
I just felt like I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I didn't, there was no, there was no system or, or book that said, Hey, if you just did these things, you'll be successful. And I knew people out there were successful. The industry as a whole was really struggling, but there were people that were doing a ton of deals. So there were people that were, that were getting by that were, um, that were thriving and I wasn't thriving and I didn't know what the difference was. How can somebody else, some other guy in my same city be doing a ton of deals? I see all the for sale signs. People are buying houses. Like I know that there's a business out there. I just didn't know how to get it. And it wasn't for lack of willingness. It wasn't for lack of wanting to do some hard work. Like I would have put in the time and the effort. I just didn't know what direction to turn. I needed some like some, some guidance, something was missing. And I didn't know what that something was. I was just blind to it. Yeah. It's a bit like you're right on the edge of an ocean of abundance and you see other people bringing their dump trucks and filling up their dump trucks with that ocean of abundance. And you see they're no smarter than you. They're no better than you, but what are they doing that you're not doing? What do they know that you don't know? How is it that they have so many deals coming in still because regardless of rates, inventory, inflation, people keep getting into the market, moving up in the market, getting married, getting divorced and dying. All those require transactions. So, you know, someone's got their name on those transactions. And when it's not you, you know, again, that, that hurts to see that there's an ocean of abundance of opportunity and yet not being able to capitalize on it. You're just so close. You're bringing your thimble to the ocean while these other people are bringing the dump truck, right? It's like the contrast can really hurt. Yeah, so and another thing that was really frustrating too, is I was spending money. Like I had, I, I had reserves that I was willing to put in and, and invest in myself. And so I tried advertising on a couple different platforms on my own. And I didn't know what I was doing. And then I paid for an advertising program for somebody to teach me. You know, I found some guys on, on, on Instagram. They're like, we'll teach you how to do great advertising. And I tried that. It was okay, but didn't really work out. Wasn't making me my ROI. I tried um, on some of the big platforms like Zillow and realtor.com and just wasn't getting the kind of success that I needed to get. So it wasn't the, you know, I was spending money and just wasn't seeing the results. Yeah. And it's one thing to be chewing up your savings just from your own personal expenses, exceeding how much you're earning. But then when you accelerate the hemorrhage by flailing to trying to find a solution with substandard solutions that don't work, and you're just now making the hemorrhage even worse, uh, obviously the sleepless nights uh, certainly do not get any better in that kind of scenario. So tell me about some of the solutions you were flailing at that just weren't working. Obviously you were spending money, you're spending time to no avail on a variety of different things. Chances are there's a few of these things you're about to list that many of our listeners have tried as well to no avail, but something tells me that it's going to be a little bit of consolation for them to hear that they're not the only one. So tell us about some of the things that you tried to no avail that didn't work. Yeah. So I tried advertising on my own on, um, just like with Google, um, Google doing Google paid leads. Uh, I tried having an advertising firm that did Google paid leads for me. No luck there. Um, I used loans IO. Uh, this is more recently. We used loans IO to try advertising on TikTok of all places. Um, not successful. Um, I did my own advertising on Facebook, which really worked well during the refi boom, but then Facebook changed their algorithms a couple years ago and the success for that dropped off. Um, and I didn't find a good way to translate that to purchases and to working with realtors. Um, I tried a company called Hyros, um, very expensive, and they do some really intense um, click funnel development and uh, YouTube advertising development. Yep. Great stuff. Great guy. Alex Becker is fantastic, but uh, the, the program didn't click for me. Um, I tried uh, uh, realtor.com, spent a lot of money on realtor.com, and I met a lot of realtors, but you know, even meeting those realtors, I was like, Hey, Hey, you got some more deals for me. Hey, let's, let's, let's work together. Let's get some more deals. And didn't really have a good method of taking those realtors that I was meeting that I was completing a transaction with into success. And the number of leads I got was good years ago. Realtor.com has changed the way that they do metrics. And now we're not getting live leads on realtor.com anymore. And that's less effective than it used to be. Um, Zillow.com spend money with a realtor on Zillow.com that just didn't get the large volume of leads. And we got a couple, but I don't know, uh, the amount of uh, non-responses just wasn't that great. So, so many different things, right? There was no shortage of effort, no shortage of iteration to trying to get this thing back on track where you were during the COVID heyday. And talk about another kick in the nuts, right? When you're making money hand over fist, 
and you're like, man, this is sweet. It wets your palate, right? It's like, this is what it feels like to make some freedom money. Hallelujah. Finally, I'm getting my break, right? And then it's like, all of a sudden, the proverbial rug gets pulled up from underneath you and you land smack on the ground and it hurts. So you try all these different things. You try all these lead programs, online programs, all this, that, and the other. All of it's just, for the most part, a complete waste of time, energy, and money. Money that is now becoming more and more scarce as you're chewing up savings and the net worth is draining by the day, week, and month. Tell me, okay, now we're at this place, the pivotal moment where you see my ad. You're like, who is this bald dude? How could he possibly have anything real and something that's actually worth my time after you're already jaded from trying these all these other things? What crossed your mind that had you stay open to at least checking it out, even though you were understandably and justifiably quite skeptical? What was there for you that had you saying, oh, what the heck? Why not give it a try and check it out? Yeah, everything I'd spent money on, all the programs I tried to develop for myself were all based on my own personal lead gen. Right. I needed to get more leads in the door for myself. And I, it, it's been a while now. It's, it's probably been about a year, right? And so I remember exactly what the ad said. But my feeling was your pitch is, hey, let somebody else bring those leads to you. Build some relationships that are going to be consistent and long-term and meaningful. And after having been so transactional with so many realtors that I'd connected to on Zillow and on Realtor.com or transactional trying to find each individual lead on Facebook, and I was just like, yeah, what, why wouldn't I do something where I can, I can build a relationship with somebody, make a great friend, have a great relationship with them and, and, and be able to get leads from them on a consistent basis. Cause I knew there were realtors. I saw realtor signs in my own neighborhood for realtors that were selling houses. And I was like, if I can get that guy to work with me, this, this would be great. Like fantastic. Game changer, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it reminds me how important it is to get connected to the fact that there is truly no bonus points or merit badges for doing it the hard way. Right. It's like, you can take the long, slow grind up the mountain, or you can take the shortest path to the cash method. That is just so much more expedient. And yet so many people are still hawking the getting crappy leads off the internet program. Frankly, we used to do lead programs when it was still somewhat viable. In fact, it was quite viable for a time. And then of course the algorithms changed and the bottom dropped out. It just wasn't as viable. And so you ended up getting a bunch of crappy leads that don't convert and you're spending all this time, energy and money sifting through traff and sifting through a mountain of gravel just to find a few gold nuggets. And then we start to think about strategically, why would we do that when we can just get a handful of top producing realtor partners to send you one, two, three deals a month versus sifting through all that chaff. Alternatively, another thing you may contrast this with is like, why would I go after 40, 50, 60 low producing realtors that might send you one, two, three deals a year when you can just have five to seven who send you one, two, three deals a month, right? We call that the shortest path to the cash. So, yeah, and, and I'd been in agencies before where I had seen the top producer in the office work with two realtors that were bringing him 30 deals a month. And I'm just like, like, I'm not in a position to call up a realtor and be like, hey, I know you got 80 deals a month and you've got a guy you're working with, but you really should start sending all those deals to me like that. That script was missing from my life. And frankly, even if somebody gave me a script, I would think the ability for me to show some type of value to that type of realtor completely missing from my life as well. Like I just was like, well, I can't work with those guys that have tons of deals. Like maybe I can find a a realtor that'll give me a couple of deals or a bunch of realtors. And so just, I'd seen that model work where I'd seen mortgage guys paying a ton of money to be the, the guy at the desk in the Keller Williams office or whatever realtor company's office. And they were getting the deals in, but they're spending thousands of dollars to do that thing. And I couldn't find it. I actually called some realtors around. I was like, hey, are you guys looking for somebody to rent a desk to in your office? And they're like, no. <laughs> it's just, I just, yeah, I, the, the connection of how to get that realtor in my pocket and build that relationship was 100% missing. And I'm glad you mentioned that because it's one thing to get a handful, five, seven, 10, 12 top producing realtors who are doing, say, 20 plus buyer sides a year to send you one, two, three deals a month versus 
going into an office and being the in-house lender in an office. And now you're basically the underpaid and overworked bitch in the office, being able to pay money for desk fee every month so that you might get 10% of the buyer sides of that office. Maybe if you're lucky over the span of a year, two years, three years, and oftentimes they take a cut of your commission on top of that because you're the in-house. So you're basically overworked, underpaid as the, uh, you know, the loan bitch, so to speak. And you're not really seeing the top producers, you're usually seeing the lower producers that are the ones that are babysitting and micromanaging and are super freaked out to have the deal derailed that they don't let you do your job properly because they're freaked out that if they lose this deal, they're not going to be able to pay their bills, right? So you're dealing with the energy of all these energy vampires sucking you dry on the daily. And that's what a lot of loan officers think is working smart, right? Good luck with that one. We have many of our clients who came from that environment and that's definitely doing it the hard way. So clearly that's not the solution either. So you saw, because you're smart and you're intuitive, you saw that there's got to be a way to get these higher producers on board. The question is, how do I do it? So you see the ad, you read it, you click on it, you watch the webinar, you get to the end of the webinar, And there's a call to action to book a call. Obviously, you got to that point, you realize there's something of substance there that was worth at least having a conversation. What was it that you saw on the webinar that made you feel like, hey, this is credible enough or this has got some some substance and some validity enough to at least invest 45 minutes to an hour on the phone with a consultant? What what did you see there that had you be impressed enough to take that next step? Yeah, I think some of it was just the language, just talking about like where to turn for deals was just, I mean, not that it's revolutionary, but it was such a paradigm shift for me to say like, hey, I've been chasing all these, these lead gen and all of a sudden somebody's like, there's a better way. And it was just like, like angels singing. It's just like, oh, there's a, there's a better way. And I've been searching for a better way. I've been searching for something that would fit um, the way I wanted to do business, you know, doing business with people that I enjoyed and, and liked working with that were happy to do business with me. And I just like the idea that that could exist gave me enough hope that I was like, man, if this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, maybe I'll get a couple of ideas. Like maybe I'll just glean a couple of things. I'll listen to his phone call. He'll give me a little tidbit here and there that I can use to kind of work this angle. And then I'll shut him down and I won't buy whatever it is he's selling. You know, and just like, I was like, Hey, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just get some free resources. And have this phone <laughs> right. call. And as you noticed on that call, it happened a little different than you initially anticipated. Mm -hmm. What what surprised you about that call that you didn't anticipate or you didn't expect, not just in terms of the fact that you decided to say, screw it, let's do it, feel your fear and do it anyways and invest in yourself and probably a lot more boldly uh, than you had ever thought you would ever do. But what did you experience on that call that was way out of left field you did not expect? I I think a lot of the sincerity of, of just trying to figure out where I was at and what I was working towards um, was, was really impressive. Like, not just like, Hey, you're up on the sales call and I'm just going to sell you this thing and tell you about this product and tell you how great I'm, I am. But uh, um, having somebody really try and find out what I was accomplishing, asking the, the kind of questions that were asked, the, the, the kind of um, fact finding or interest in where I was at and what I wanted to accomplish was really refreshing compared to a lot of the systems I've been buying. It's like, how many leads would you like to have? Like how many thousands of clients would you like to get in? Like, we can do that. No problem. You know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of hope and dreams and um, promises. Um, And the call uh, that we had was, you know, let's find out what you want to accomplish in your life. Let's find out what your hopes are. Where do you want to be? And what are you doing? Like actually finding out, Hey, where, where am I at? Like that was, that was a really helpful thing for me. Yeah. There's power in truth, right? Jesus said, the truth shall set you free. What he didn't say is it's probably going to piss you off because the <laughs> truth is obviously in many cases, very inconvenient and painful when we shine the light of truth on where you're at and the consequence of staying on the trajectory you're already on. But as we like to say here on Planet Prosper, we can't change our reality until we face our reality. 
So there's power in stepping into the light of truth and it takes a lot of courageous vulnerability to do that. And so you're obviously one of those uh, courageous souls that was willing to step into the light of truth because you have that strength and humility that was being willing to step into the light of truth versus pretending. And the problem with pretending is it doesn't matter how much you're pretending everything's going to be fine when it's not. It doesn't matter how optimistic you are when everything really is not very optimistic. If you're heading east looking for the sunset, we got a big freaking problem, right? <laughs> yeah. If you're going to the gunfight with a butter knife, you got a big yeah. freaking problem. So to fix the problem, it's like we often say, someone's not going to buy the solution to, until they first bought the problem, yeah. right? Yeah. And the same thing with realtors. They're not going to buy your solution until they buy the problem of not having your solution. Yeah. So let's talk about that for a moment. So obviously you're at the precipice. I, I don't really like to call it a precipice, probably <laughs> wrong, wrong terminology. It's more like the launching pad, right? Yeah. You're on the launching pad. You're now in a moment of truth of like, am I going to shrink back in my comfort zone, play it safe, play it small and says, and say, well, manana, I'll think about it. You know, maybe I'll, wait to close a few more deals first before I make a big, bold, intelligent investment in myself. I don't know if I'm ready to stretch out of my comfort zone at that level. Like you totally could have said that and it would have been totally cool. We would have honored that. We would have invited you into your champion self to feel the fear and do it anyways and to get comfortable being uncomfortable because that's how champions roll. But we'll honor wherever you're at. That's just, you know, we're not looking to drag people across the start line. You know, those are not the kind of people we can help. So we give you the space to choose what you're really committed to. Obviously you decided to invest in yourself because you're more committed to your dream than your comfort zone. But tell us about that moment of truth where if you're really honest, there was probably some fear, some trepidation, maybe the inclination towards hesitation. And yet you felt the fear and did it anyways. What was going through your mind at that moment? And what had you just decide to say, screw it, let's do it. Yeah. I, I, I think maybe I wasn't as fearful as you're leading on. Um, I, I certainly had that worry that like, Oh, this is just another program. I mean, I I'd spent money. I'd spent thousands of dollars on programs and had them not provide results. There's always I, that fear that this might be the next of the is same, this, right? Is this another one? Am I blowing thousands of dollars again? I, I had spent thousands of dollars and like broken even. Um, I had spent thousands of dollars and gotten nothing. And so I'm just like, man, do I spend some more money? Is this going to be the next bum deal? But for me, there was so much hope. This was so different than anything I tried out before. That I was like, there, it, there's, there's so much potential <laughs> that if this guy actually provides what he's talking about, then we're good. Like we're good. Like, I know it's a, it's a problem we sometimes have in our industry, but I'm just thinking like, okay, how many deals do I have to close to like break even on this thing? Like if this guy gives right. me one nugget and I close like one and a half deals, then, then I'm good. I've broken even. I've got a good story to tell. Maybe I get something out of it. And, and if he's right, if this guy actually delivers on what he's saying, well, then we're off the races. So I'm a little bit of an optimistic. And so I was like, oh, sure, this sounds great. This jives with the way I want to sell and the way I want to do business. This jives with who I want to be working with. Um, and so let's, let's give it a shot. So you intuitively knew that this is a significant upgrade from the pea shooters and, uh, the pellet guns that you'd been trying out previously. You realize this is a tank at the gunfight, not a pea shooter. So you had a significant amount of, I don't know if we call it hope, maybe confidence, certainty combination thereof that had it a lot easier for you to make that decision. But still, of course, there's still that underlying trepidation of like, is this really going to be legit or are they going to follow through? Yeah. So let's fast forward. Now you, you pulled the trigger, you had enough faith in yourself and enough faith in our, you know, 18 years on the front lines of capitalism, helping mortgage pros create breakthroughs and all the success stories we've produced for our clients to say, what the heck, let's do this. And fast forward now, well, actually just maybe before we fast forward, let's Wait, talk about wanna you want to hear a fun story? Don't even fast forward. I decided to pull the trigger and the guy's like, all right, I need to get your credit card information. And I gave him my credit card information. And I was like, Oh, my card's not going through. So literally we had, to, <laughs> we had to put a timeout on the purchase and I had to like go shuffle money around. I had to like get two credit cards. And I was like, I mean, this is me, Dorn. I was like struggling at the time, right? Like, just making, barely making ends meet. And, and you're not alone. Cashed, 
I didn't, I didn't have the cash to invest in myself. And so I got my two credit cards and got the balances just right. Got it through. And I'm like, whew, went through. <laughs> That's what we call getting resourceful. <laughs> Yeah, right. Let's, let's it's never a matter of resources. It's always a matter of resourcefulness. And when you're interested, there's always an excuse, but when you're committed, there's always a way. And yeah. you, my friend are one committed mofo. And yeah. so you found a way because the committed always find a way. There is no obstacle too big for the committed. The decision comes first, the dollars come second, right? Yeah. So you did whatever it took because that's how champions roll. And by the way, that's very common more often than you might think where people have to get super resourceful, whether that be, you know, liquidating stocks or, you know, dipping into their retirement or, you know, 401k RSPs or whatever it happens to be selling crap in their garage they don't use. You'd be surprised all the crazy stuff people have done to get resourceful, to get out of lack, limitation and scarcity and to step into prosperity because they're freaking sick and tired of being sick and tired of being on the struggle bus. And they're not willing to go one more day like that. When you get to that fed up threshold, you're willing to do whatever it freaking takes. Right. Yep. So that's where you were. So now fast forward, maybe, no, a fast day, forward, yeah. <laughs> maybe fast forward another day or a week here. You are now on the other side, you've launched onto planet prosper. You've now got access to the recipe, the blueprint, the formula that, has you on this podcast today sharing your tremendous breakthrough forexing your income in six months is phenomenal to say the least, especially in a market like we're facing now, you're about to share some grids and some charts to show some visuals on that momentarily. But what were perhaps some of the hesitations, skepticisms you may have had as you launched into doing going through the modules, executing on the formula and doing the work. Cause obviously this is very different than what you're used to hearing about, whether it be buying crappy internet leads and eh, that's doing it the hard way, cold calling 40 realtors every Monday and eh, that's doing it the hard way. So you've heard all these different things and now we're getting you to zig while everyone else is zagging. Right? So intuitively, in most cases, people have some skepticisms. What were those skepticisms for you? Yeah, my biggest hurdle, like once I started getting into the modules, which were the, the individual trainings to talk about, hey, let's do this one step and learn how to do this homework and learn about this skill and this script. It really quickly became not so much skepticism, but I really struggled with um, some perfectionism, right? Because I was seeing these scripts and I was like, oh, man, I'm going to talk to I'm going to talk to this guy and I need to make sure I say these things right. I need to make sure I'm showing the right value. I need to make sure I'm getting the wording right. And and so I really quickly um I mean, I was listening to modules and I was like, I got to get this all right. I got to make sure it's all just perfect because I don't want to mess this up. Right. Um, and, and so that paralysis of analysis was real. Um, and so I, I started going through the modules um, maybe a little more slowly than some people would have because I wanted to master each one and listen to it again and make sure I got the wording just right. I was taking down notes and um, we got on a QA and a call um, with a bunch of other people. And I remember you asking me like, Hey, you're, you're a ways into your modules. Like what happened? How did the rubber meet the road? And I'm like, no, no, Doran, I'm, I'm still, I'm still learning about it. I'm figuring, I'm figuring it out any day. Now I'm going to get myself going. <laughs> so. Polishing everything up to perfection. Right. Yeah. And that's such a common proclivity. I can tell you, my wife uh, has really stretched me because I'm the screw it. Let's do it. You know, like zero planning, zero polishing, just like, I'm like a fart in a windstorm. I'm just like all over the place. My wife, she's got to have everything just right. Threading the needle and everything. We have been doing a reno and I kid you not, this reno was supposed to take like three weeks. It's been over six months. We still don't have a freaking toilet because we had the toilet a month ago, but she wasn't certain if it was the right toilet, you know? So, uh, that proclivity, she's not the only one. A lot of people stretch themselves in our program out of this sense that they have to have it just right. Because they realize that no matter how perfect it is, if you're polishing your perfect plans in the parking lot, it's going to be mighty hard to prosper, right? Eventually you have to release the emergency brake and start moving. And the cool thing is, is that everyone incubates in their own unique timing. So it's not like we're shaming you for being in that space. It's like, Hey, okay. You're, I get that you're feeling like you need to practice some more and polish some more and get everything just right. And what if we were to just start to practice 
with real humans because <laughs> yeah. real humans are right. going to give you objections and questions, which is where the real practice is, right? Instead of just talking theory while you're going broke. So I love that, number one, you kept showing up to the Q&A calls. You kept showing up. 80% of success is just showing up. You were engaged. You were asking questions. You were playing full on and full out, you know, because if you want to win, all in is the only way to win. And you were showing all in, in it to win it on those calls consistently. And then eventually you started to hit that critical threshold where it's like you were at 209, 210, 210 and a half, 211. And then you might've been thinking like, Doran, this is taking so long. Like, you know, I need to have everything just right first. And you, I'm sure if you're like most had the proclivity to feel like you're behind, right? I'm behind what well, these people are getting these results. So I need to get my shit together. You know, I should be further along. Like that's a very common experience as well. The shooting on ourselves that we should be further ahead while we polish the perfect plans going nowhere. Cause we haven't executed on them yet. And that, self-sabotage type of uh, inclination that we have as humans is real. And yet there is a beautiful space that we create called, Hey, you're here. Just keep showing up. You're here. Just focus on making progress. We seek progress, not perfection. That's one of the drums we beat like a cheap rap song here on planet prosper. It's progress. We seek, we seek progress, not perfection. So then about six months into this polishing your perfect plans, things started to pop. You started to get into motion. You removed the emergency break. You started to actually practice this with real humans. Tell us about what happened. I know you got some charts and some graphs and stuff like that. Uh, and you can certainly show that when you're ready to do so. But tell us what started to happen as you started to apply the coaching. What did you notice really worked? And what results did you get and what was the difference that made the difference? Yeah. The thing that was most surprising for me was it wasn't as, I mean, there's a, there's a learning curve to learning about all the skills and tools that you provide. That that's a reality. But once I got over that and I was like, okay, I, I learned the language. I've got some really good stories to tell. I've got pretty good grasp of what kind of tools and resources we have to offer. Um, I've got, I've got, I've learned my scripts. Once I started doing it, I was like, so worried about what is, what if the realtor says this, what if I get this objection? What if this comes up? And I started talking to people and I'm a people person. And so it, 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 it was not as bad as I was thinking. Like people were really open and they're just like, wow, you want to help me out? You want to do this thing? Like, sure. I'd, I'd love to work with you. And all of a sudden I started to, I was talking to realtors. And I was just like, I, I hadn't figured out ever before how to get a realtor to just really respond and find deep value in what I had to offer them. Cause I didn't have anything to offer them other than I wanted to like have them give me all their loans. Like have me work with all their clients. <laughs> let me do a great job for you. Right. <laughs> here's, my, here's my offer. I've got great rates and great service, just like everybody else. Um, and so to be, start talking to people and have them say, wow, this is really fantastic. What you're offering me is pretty great to see that this, that, that what I was, the story I was telling was valued mm -hmm. um, was, was pretty fantastic. To, to see um, I, the desperation is not the right word, but I, I mean, times were tough. And so the realtors I was talking to were also hurting a little bit. They were looking for something right now, today, you know, it's, we're, we're in the future and people are, realtors are still struggling. And so when I was talking to these realtors, they're like, oh yeah, I would love, you can help me be more successful. You can help me knock my goals out of the park. Um, they were excited to talk to me. They were excited to hear what I had to say. And I was expecting to have to really sell and twist the knife and get somebody to like really have to agree with me. Um, and it wasn't that it was, it was, uh, I was, I was given food to hungry people. It was, it was great. What a difference chasing and cajoling and groveling is a very different energy than attracting and rolling and sifting and sorting and not having to be forced to work with the rotten apples, but educating and warming up the green apples and just working with the juicy, sweet red apples, right? There's no cajoling, groveling, begging, bribing, chasing, none of that. It's a very different energy. So we trained you up on the mindset for that, the words that work to get these realtors hot for what you got. We call it the all cheese, no whiskers approach. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Cause they're kind of like mice. They love cheese. They hate whiskers. They know whiskers are attached to something that wants to eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's called a cat and realtors, believe it or not, are very similar. So we remove the whiskers, which is the chasing vibe, the desperation vibe. The, let me help you with your marketing and let me help you. Let me give you some leads, all that stuff. Cause it just gives them too much information such that they say, oh, I've already tried that. I've already done that. Uh, I don't need that. My brokerage already offers that. Uh, thanks, but no thanks. And then of course we gave you the tools to overcome a lot of the common objections. Like I've already got my lender. Uh, I'm not interested. Uh, call me tomorrow. Uh, you know, Thanks, but no thanks. All those different smoke screens. So you uploaded about, as far as I recollect, 30 realtors to what we call the Realtor Attraction Campaign, otherwise known as the RAC. Tell us what happened and what has proceeded from that initial upload in terms of your pipeline, closings, commissions, and growth. Yeah. So Doran tells me, he's, you're like, all right, so, you know, find you know we've got this tool to find all the realtors in my area and so i'm getting like these realtors and one of the coaching things had said yeah i get you know if you're doing you know 30 a week or 15 a week realtors a week and we're running this campaign and and maybe plan on reaching out to 100 or 200 and so i'm picking the 100 best realtors in my state 200 best realtors in my extended area and i'm thinking like I'm going to go all out on this. I'm a six month extended campaign. Let's go, buddy. And so I rolled out my um, realtor traction campaign to the first, uh, the first, I didn't want to do 30 at once. So I did 15 in one week and then 15 the following week. And, um, you know, probably half of them didn't respond at all. They didn't, they didn't reply to any of the marketing to the touches that were going up, um, you know, on my behalf, but there were a bunch that responded and they're like, Hey, I'm really interested. Let's talk. And I was like, Oh, that was easy. And I'll go out and meet them. Like, Hey, one, I'd really love to offer you this stuff and you offer me this stuff. And, and it was great. And so just right off the bat, I had a lot of success with all the realtors that I started meeting with were game. They were down to play. And I was like, well, Doran told me, I, I mean, I, you, you'd encourage me to set up my goals to figure out how many realtors I needed. Like if I get some true VIP partners that are handing me one deal a month or two referrals a month, how many referrals is that going to generate? You know, how many, how many prospects is that going to be versus how many applications is that going to turn into? How many closed deals is that going to turn into? And I did the math right there. I was like, Dorn, I want to be a mil- I want to make a million dollars in a year. Nobody in my family, nobody I'm like close to has ever made a million dollars in a year, especially as a loan officer. I was like, that's, like you say, that's surgeon money. That's what I'd like to be doing. And so, and get my goals. so I got my goals. They're right here. Oh, <laughs> right here. I and I was it. like, I got my goals down here. I need, you know, I need six hot realtors, some six VIP partners that are going to be bringing me two deals a month. I had a, I, I, maybe six that are just kind of, kind of warm realtors, maybe not VIP, but they're trying to do their best. Maybe some newer, some newer realtors or, or some realtors that are referring me some of their deals. And so I was like, I need 12 realtors. That's what I need, 12 VIPs. And if I can hit that, you know, maybe I have to go to, through 100 or 200 or 300 to get there. And I got there quicker than I expected. You know, I got my I got my six VIP realtors out of the first 30 that I reached out to. Um, and then I Amazing. reached back out to a bunch of realtors that I already knew that I would love to have worked with, but that wouldn't work with me, that weren't. I asked them to give me all their deals and they said no. Um, and so I reached back out to some of those realtors um, that I already have a relationship with, but had done a transaction with, um, and picked those ones I really wanted to work with. And I rolled the campaign. I just called them. I was like, Hey, I got this thing I need to talk to you about. And, and it worked great. Like all of a sudden I had something to say. I had, I had, I had the messaging, I had the systems, I had everything. It was great. And so all of a sudden I had the, I had enough realtors that, that, that were ready to play ball. Um, that I started getting deals in the door. I started having realtors being like, all right, let's make this happen. Like, here's a client. Like, Calm tomorrow, calm today. Like, let's make this happen. And so I went from, from not having very many prospects and not having very many applications to having way more than I'd started with. Um, and yeah, I can pull up my numbers. Let me see if I can do this. I'm not a computer whiz, but let's try and make this happen. Oh boy. Let's I'll bring see. it up on the screen once you do the screen share so people right, can see it. We get that here. A little clunky at this part, but we're gonna make it happen. It's pretty amazing though, to go from 30 people loaded, don't know you from a hole in the wall, being on the struggle bus, doing two deals a month to four Xing that in short order 
And check this out, guys. This is how he did it. Uh, let me just uh, add this in here. All right. Looks like it's working. All right. Yeah. So this these bar charts on their left are from, uh, yeah, from from six months before I started the program, really got things ramped up. And you can see this is the number of prospects I was getting in. So this is prequals, people that I was getting introduced to by Realtor or people I were getting off of Realtor.com or like from an ad campaign. And so it's people I was talking to, getting some information from, showing them numbers, trying to make something happen. And so in the six months before I started the program, 80 prequals. And then once I got my VIP partnerships up and running, 202 prequals, which was pretty fantastic. Um, That's was amazing. Really and that's in the face of a so-called slow market where your competition's dropping like flies. Most of your competitors are whining, simply complaining and hunkering down and blaming all of their regression and stagnation on the market and just feeling like a victim to the market. And here you are. I mean, this looks like you're in the gravy train market. I mean, this looks like a sunny skies, lollipops, unicorns and rainbows market just from your bar chart. If someone didn't know the context of the market. They'd never have any suspicion whatsoever that this is a down market, which is pretty phenomenal to say the least. Yeah. And this is zero, this is zero refine. Actually I had one refinance, I think is in there. Um, one cash out, but all, this is all purchase business. And the period from the 80 prequels, I think we were at five and a half, six percent during that period. And then this is current. I mean, this is September. This is the last month. So um, you know, we're at high interest rates and in this high interest rate environment where a lot of people are really struggling. Um, yeah, this just prospects, just getting people in the door to talk to um, is more than doubled for me over that period of time. And people and, might be thinking, well, that's nice, Dor or, that's nice, Ben. You know, prequels are cool, but I don't get paid on prequels. How many of those actually converted? Yeah. So here's my applications. So this is the same set of periods. Um, I had wow. 10 apps. Um, and then went to 96 applications. So that's fully completed applications where I could pull credit. Um, I was doing pre-approvals. Um, this to me, when I was actually looking at my numbers was staggering. <laughs> yeah, that's remarkable. Talk about filling the, the, the chart on the left is like filling the swimming pool with a squirt gun. And the one on the right is like a fire hydrant. Yeah. And, and part of it is that, you know, I was dealing with a lot of prequals that were, you know, okay. You know, I was getting some of them for my own lead gen. I'm still doing realtor.com. And so I was getting some of those people that are just like maybe looky lose, but they're not willing to actually pull the trigger and take an application. But when I'm getting leads from realtors and the people are looking at houses, they're ready to buy. They want to buy. Maybe they're not buying this month, but when I tell them they need to get pre-approved and they're going to take an application, they're like, okay, I'll take the application. Here's my pay stubs. Here's my bank mm -hmm. statements. Like, let's go. Um, and That's so the for power me, of third party endorsement, right? That's the oh. power of having a trusted professional, like a top producing realtor who has clout and influence in the industry in general and with their clients in particular. So when they tell the client jump work with Ben Davis, he's my go-to, they say how high and they're all on rice, right? That's the, the power of that third party endorsement factor edification working in your favor instead of just getting a bunch of crappy leads off the internet that don't even know you from a hole in the wall and you're one of five other lenders chasing them down trying to get the app from them this is like you know this is the blue ocean versus the red ocean for sure yeah and my, and my goal my personal goal is to have 30 prequals a month and 15 applications a month i didn't even do 15 applications in a six-month period um before that and, and so now it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm over my 15 you know, with that one month, I think it was 27, 28 applications, um, in, in June It's summer month. So that, that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, I'm over my goal, right. Over 15 applications to hit my dream money, super happy, uh, tell Dorney's fantastic goal. Yeah. How many, how many new realtors is this from? If we look at the net addition of realtors from the chart on the left to the chart on the right, how many net additional realtors did you add to produce such a remarkable breakthrough? So four were brand new and three were realtors that I had done one transaction with, but didn't have a relationship with. So seven wow. realtors altogether. So seven additional upgraded pre-existings in combination with four new ones. So three and four, up, three upgradeds and four completely new. Yeah. That's amazing. Especially when you consider most people think they need 40, 50, 60 mediocre realtors because 
they don't even think that they're capable or worthy of getting a top producer because they think the top producer is already soldered in stone, married to their existing lender. They don't even try to go after the top dogs because they think they're way above their league, right? So the fact that you're able to do that and have that kind of a breakthrough in results with such a nice, simple, elegant, streamlined uh, dream team that you've created of just seven partners is absolutely the dust on top of outstanding, man. That's phenomenal. Let's look at uh, the outcome of those apps in terms of closings. Cause I have a feeling that's going to look pretty cool. Wow. Look at that. Hey, from yeah. seven to 31. Yeah. From seven to 31. And, and the interesting thing too, is that of the 96 applications I took, right. There's a little bit of a shift because it takes time to go from application to, to paid business um, while people are shopping. And I've got a lot of people that you know, the interest rates are high and they'll do a pre-approval and they'll look and they'll say, yeah, maybe I'm going to wait a little bit, but I've got maybe 30 people that are ready to buy with interest rates dropped down a little bit or their inventory is not quite what they need it to be. You know, I'm in a small market and so inventory is very low. I'm in Oregon and um, it's a tough market to be in. Um, But I'll tell you what, going from 3 million over six months to over 16 million in six, six month period, it's pretty great. Yeah. Not to mention again, uh, the fact that this is one of the toughest markets we've ever seen. You know, I've been coaching mortgage pros for almost two decades. This is certainly rivaling 2008, 2009 with the mortgage meltdown. Uh, We've had at least 30% of the industry purged in the last 18 months. So this is a formidable storm to say the least. So, So to see you thriving like this, Man, I just, I'm literally, I'm smiling from ear to ear, brother. I'm so happy for you. This is amazing to see. And how's the pipeline looking? Because, you know, that's another thing people, uh, skept- the skeptical people be like, well, you know, how sustainable is that, Ben? How's the pipeline looking? Is it, is it growing? Is it stagnating? Is it regressing? Is it something sustainable long term? Or is that just kind of a lucky you know, six months? I mean, the realtors I'm working with aren't slowing down. Um, the realtors I'm working with are successful. Um, they've been in the business. They know what they're doing. Um, I don't anticipate that all of a sudden they're going to stop bringing in clients. I mean, they're all hungry. They all have kids to feed. They're doing what they've done to be successful to this point. And so, hey, if they brought me two deals last month, odds of them bringing me two deals next month, pretty good. Um, and that's the beauty of this. It's not like lead gen where I got to like hope the lead gen system is good or hope that Facebook doesn't change their algorithms. Right. I'm working with successful people and they're going to continue being successful and we're going to continue building a relationship. If anything, they may bring me more deals. Um, I've got one realtor in particular and she gives about half her deals to somebody else. He's paying for Zillow leads. So whenever she gets those Zillow ones coming in, she sends them to him and she sends him some of her clients and she only sends me a couple. Um, but every time I work with her and she's getting these tools for me and she's just like, oh, I just need to work with you. <laughs> like You're doing all this stuff for me. All the guy's doing is pay, pay, paying for some of my stuff. And so, um, yeah, if anything, I, I anticipate that the the success I'll have with these realtors will go up. If the market improves, Dorn, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like I, I'm at the point where uh, we, we, t- we talked about this at a QA call a couple weeks ago. Um, I'm, I'm busy. I'm busy at the point where my wife is concerned about how busy I am. Um, <laughs> not that she's complaining about how much money is coming in at this point, but, but, but she, she recognizes that I'm busy. And so yeah, if rates go down and all of a sudden these realtors start doing double the volume that they're doing right now, um, that's a problem for me. That's a growth problem for me where all of a sudden I'm going to have more business than I than I really want to have right now, which is such a shift from where I was at before. Mm-hmm. Of like, I, I'm scraping the barrel. I'm, I went a month without a closing. Like, how do I make this work? Definitely a good problem to have. That's what I call a champagne problem right there. And a lot of people listening, watching this live, as well as on the replay, would love to have that problem, to say the least. So the fact that you've been able to create this kind of a problem in this kind of a market is definitely an inspiration, which is a big reason why I wanted to have you share your story, because it's truly inspirational. One of the things I just want to honor in you, Ben, is the fact that you have that strength and humility that allows people to really trust you quickly. And it's based on a strength of commitment, a strength of truly caring in a fellow soul that you're serving versus just caring about your own prerogatives and your own needs. Uh, You've got this pleasing personality that 
you know, it, it's like if someone doesn't like Ben Davis, they need a checkup from the neck up. There's something wrong with them, uh, which has served you well, but it's also matched with commitment. It's matched with integrity. It's ma- matched with heart. It's matched with tenacity and grit. Uh, and all that stuff is uh, all essential for success. If you have a pleasing personality, but you don't have the grit and the commitment, it's not going to fly. So the fact that you brought your heart to the table, your grit, your commitment to the table, your coachability to the table was a big reason why it's been so successful. So I want to honor you for that. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Yeah. Well, cool. So here you are guys listening to Ben Davis share his story, obviously remarkable forexing his income in just six months in the face of one of the challenge, most challenging, toughest markets we've seen in a long time in the face of what we most would call unanimous, unanimously a very tough or slow market. And yet he is got himself in a problem where he needs to get more help. Uh, as soon as <laughs> rates go down, it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when he's going to need to get a kick-ass operations team to handle all that growth as his partners ramp up production. And as more and more transactions start to accelerate in the market, he will be bar- he'll be definitely enjoying the first fruits of that. And so there's no bout of doubt of Ben, you're definitely going to need to be proactive and preemptive on that. Yeah. That's going to be the next phase of the coaching. And we can certainly help you with that as well. Uh, when you're ready to execute on that, getting your top talent team, superstars only. So you can focus on rainmaking instead of paper pushing, do what you do best, get the best, do all the rest. That's the next phase to get you to a million and beyond while working 10, 15, 20 hours a week less. And that's what's available in this business. It's just a matter of putting the right policy, procedure, protocol, people in place to do so. So excited to help you with that. If you guys are listening to this, watching this, you're like, I need me some Ben Davis secret sauce. What did he do that I am not doing? Because I need me some of that kind of a problem called too much business. Uh, if indeed you're in that place, and I shouldn't call it too much business. It's more like the fear of it getting more and not being able to handle it. We certainly don't want to call it too much business. So I, I'm, I'm re framing that as I say it. It's uh, it's beautiful to see you thriving, Ben. And uh, we're, we're going to celebrate that all day, every day. Uh, with that in mind, though, if you guys are watching this, you're like, Doran, Ben, I need some help. I'm struggling in this market. I don't know how to attract these realtors. I'm settling for the bottom feeders. They're having to go back to selling solar and driving Uber. They don't have any business to send me. I'm sure as heck not having success with the successful ones. I need some guidance. I need some tools. I need to know the words that work. Whatever I'm doing is not working. Clearly, I can you know, see it in my pipeline, my income. I can see it in the financial hemorrhage I'm suffering on the, on the monthly and quarterly basis. I need some help. If that's you and you refuse to lose and you're in it to win it and you're definitely committed to winning in this business, not just in a fair weather market, but in any market, I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough call, just exactly the same launching pad place that Ben started with just a few months ago. That was the beginning of the journey for him. And it's the beginning of the journey for you. If you're willing to take my invitation and pull the trigger on it, it's just an honest conversation where you'd have a conversation with me or one of my consultants. We'll lift up the hood on your business. We're going to look at what's working, what's not working, where are you at now, where you want to take your business and what does it look like to be making freedom money, happy dance money. And what would is what would it look like for you to win in any market, not just a fair weather market? And what is it going to take to help you bridge that gap and make that a reality? And if we're hundred percent certain we can help you, we'll show you what that looks like instead of our proven system as Ben Davis has shared and certainly has emulated the system works when you work it. So there's no doubt our system works. The question is whether or not you're going to be the right fit to work it. So that would be the intention of that call is to explore that and to see if we have the right synergy, the right fit to work together to help you create a breakthrough, just like we did for Ben, we can do for you. And if that's you and you want to add at least a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars plus to your annual income in expedited fashion without messing around doing it the hard way, go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Ben, what would you say to someone who's on the fence right now? They're like, Doran, I've been in your universe for a while. I haven't pulled the trigger because frankly, 
money was coming in easy. I didn't really need any help. I was kind of skeptical, like who is this bald dude? And you know, what has he got to offer that every other Tom, Dick and Harry hawking the silver bullets isn't already offering. And they're still kind of a little skeptical, but they know they need some help. And they know that if they don't get help, things are going to get worse, not better. If they continue to just hunker down and wait for fair weather in this rather challenging market that only God knows when rates are going to go down. What would you say to someone like that who knows there's a lot at stake in their business, continuing to bleed the way it's bleeding or struggling the way it's struggling and knows they need help and is maybe just a little skeptical as to whether or not now's the time. Yeah. I, it's a really interesting question. I don't know why some people don't, don't, take risk or don't invest in their business, right? In our culture, it's not unusual for us to say to a kid that wants to become a CPA to say, hey, you, you need to go spend $50,000 on four years of college to be able to get your degree because that's what the industry demands of you. Or for somebody mm -hmm. who wants to become an attorney to say, hey, you need to spend $150,000 and go to an Ivy League college so you can be part of the best law firm in the country. Um, for me, when I thought about like, hey, I wanna be the best, I wanna be really successful. Um, there were cheap ways to try and do it, and they didn't work for me. And there were cheap ways for me to sit around wishing things were going to get better. And they didn't never got better. Um, and so for me, it was, am I willing to invest in myself in my education? There's not a great mortgage broker or university. Um, and this is the closest thing I could find, right? It was like, hey, if I want to invest myself, I want to make myself the best version of myself. I need to find somebody that's amazing at what they do. They can teach me. They can give me lessons, they can give me modules, they can give me wording, they can give me tools, they can show me what I'm supposed to do. And if somebody's willing to do that, um, I'm going to invest in it, right? And so I invested in myself. And there were a lot of programs I invested in myself in, where there were some empty promises. Um, and so how does somebody figure out if your system really does work, uh, right? I'm a real guy. I'm not a paid actor. I'm in Sherwood, <laughs> Oregon. You can look me up if you want. <laughs> you call me, I answer my phone all the time, right? And so there's that. But like, I mean, at some point, you've got to say like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to call Doran and talk to him on the phone and see if this guy sounds like he's telling me the stories I want to hear. And we've not gotten into much detail. So there's all kinds of stuff that we're not covering, like all kinds of resources that we're getting that are not even discussed in this whole thing that are amazing. Um, and so somebody has got to just uh, decide that they're worth it and that there's this risk here. There's this monetary risk, some investment in time that somebody has got to try to like try this out. And if you try it out and you work at it, then you're going to, then you're going to be successful. Um, and if you and if you invest in this program and you do nothing, you will not be successful. This program will be a waste of money. I'll tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to have success and you want to take things to the next level and you don't know how to do it, um, this is a fantastic way to learn how to do it. Couldn't have said it better myself, brother. Thank you so much for your time, man. Thank you for your passion. Uh, thank you for sharing your story. Uh, you're a gift to so many. Uh, you've certainly been an inspiration to our community, both here on Planet Prosper, but now abroad. Uh, it's going all over the world, US, Canada. Uh, anybody who's into becoming the best version of themselves and mastering their own success as a mortgage professional. It's going to have an opportunity to hear your story. So thank you in advance for the impact that's going to make, you know, it's like anyone can count the number of seeds that are in one apple, but only God can count how many apples can come from one seed. And you are one big, beautiful breakthrough infusing seed that is most definitely a man on the rise. I can see you being an absolute star in this industry, 2X, 3X, 5X, even 10X beyond where you're at now. I kid you not, brother, wherever you want to take it, you have the passion, the pleasing personality, the heart, the grit, the courage, and certainly the intelligence to take it to whatever level you want to take it. So there's no bout of doubt it. I'm a huge believer in you. I see greatness in you. I see the champion in you. And I'm grateful to be on the journey with you, brother. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Dorn. For I don't know what made you decide to do this. I don't know what made you decide to become a coach, but I'm grateful to you. Um, I, I owe you a great deal because I would have been floundering. I still would have been floundering. I probably honestly wouldn't be in the business today um, or I'd be really struggling trying to make it work. And so I'm grateful that you do what you do, that you are good, that you are so good at what you are good at because um, yeah, man, so many people need these kind of tools and so many people need some help and just don't know where to find it. And so I'm glad I found you. I'm glad I stumbled onto you when I did and I'm glad that your program's as good as it is. And so thank you from the bottom of my, my family, my wife, oh. thanks you 
for all the stress she's not had this year uh, because of you. What a beautiful blessing, man. It's a privilege to have this kind of uh, feedback, knowing that the work that we do is so meaningful and so life transforming. That's why we do what we do. That's the heartbeat of why we do what we do. So man, talk about stoking the rocket fuel in the rocket as uh, you share your story, brother. And uh, I'm just beyond blessed to be part of your story. Uh, even if it's perhaps just a little part of it to, to know that we make a difference uh, and that it's a difference that's sustainable and that has long-term impact, not just for your present, but for your future. And to be able to have that, have a ripple effect that can even be passed on to your kids and your kids' kids. Like that's the, that's the stuff that really fires me up. So thank you for trusting us with your dream and your business and your marketing. And uh, thanks for sharing the love by sharing your story, brother. I appreciate you. Absolutely. appreciate you too. All right, guys, you've been with the one and only Ben Davis and he has shared his story. Now the question is, would you like to have his breakthrough story become your breakthrough story? And if so, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. It won't take you much time and certainly won't cost you a single dime to check us out, but it may cost you a lot not to, as Ben has emphatically just shared. The problem does not fix itself. And so you're going to pay the price either way. You're going to either pay the price of the cost of the tuition of the university of not knowing, not knowing how to attract top producing realtors, not knowing how to make the overture, not knowing how to overcome the objections, not knowing how to win in any market and hunkering down waiting for fair weather because you don't know how to win in the face of storms, or you can make that next step and check out how we can help you win in any market, not just a fair weather market and do like Ben did. And perhaps we can help you create a breakthrough. So if that's you, book a call. Stoked to be able to connect with you. Let's see what we can do to pour gasoline on your fire. My name is Dorn Aldana coming at you with the one and only Ben Davis. Thanks for hanging with us. And one thing I want to remind you, creating breakthroughs doesn't happen by accident. It happens by design. So if you need help with that, seek help. Seek an expert who's been doing this for a long time who can be in your corner on your team to serve you to your dream. Empty your cup and let's fill your cup with your dream. Doran Aldana with Ben Davis, Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode, y'all. Peace. Thanks for being with us.